I made a physics problem to practice our ideas about work energy. So that's really the focus here, okay? So let me explain the problem and the questions that we're gonna answer, and then we'll go get to work. So I have a car, and it's a terribly drawn car because it doesn't really matter. Uh, mass of 2,000 kilograms, it starts from rest and accelerates up to a speed of 30 meters per second in five seconds. And I think that's fairly reasonable. It's a little fast, maybe, I don't know. And it, you notice that it changed from like a sports car to a minivan. Uh, that can happen sometimes. Now the question is, what's the change in internal energy going from here to there? Uh, we can, that one's not too bad. And that would be like, how much gasoline does it use? Essentially what we're asking, that's the internal energy. Or it could be a battery, right? It could be an electric car. What's the frictional force between the wheels and the road? And then what's the minimum coefficient of friction? So we're gonna solve all those things. Um, and I want to do this as a work energy problem. You could just say, I wanna find the final kinetic energy and that wouldn't be too bad, but let's do this as a work energy problem. I'm actually gonna find um, this first. Let's find the frictional force on the car. So to do that, I need to use work energy. This says that the work is equal to the change in energy, but we have to pick a system. In this case, I'm gonna pick the point particle system of the car. And this is kind of important because in the point particle system, the work done is the force dot the displacement of the center of mass. And I don't really care about where those forces are. I'm just gonna look at the, treat this as a point. And that makes it much easier. But if I do that, I only have one kind of change in energy, and that's going to be change in kinetic energy. I don't know how far the center mass moves, and that's what I want to find. Okay. Actually, I don't know. Actually, we're going to have to do this first. Okay, we'll get back to that one. Let's use the real system. The real system uh, consisting of the car. Uh, now nah, I don't need to new use the earth. Now let's say plus earth, who cares? This is on level ground. The car plus earth. In the real system, we calculate work as F dot delta R F. How far did the force move? So in this case, we still wanna draw the forces on the dot. I'm gonna draw it as a dot. Um, no, I'm gonna draw it right here. Let's draw it, here's the car. So here's the gravitational force, I'll call that Fg. And then I have uh, two normal forces, I'll call those Fn from the, from the road pushing up on the wheels. And then I have a, a forwards pushing friction force like that. Now, what's the work done by the gravitational force uh, for, this is the delta R center mass is moving that way. The work done by the gravitational force is zero. Why? Because the displacement and the gravitational force are 90 degrees. So when you take the dot product of vectors in 90 degrees, you get zero, zero. Same thing for the normal force, both of those. Zero, there's actually four of those, actually, I just realized. Zero plus zero, I'll just count two. And then what about the frictional force? Zero. Why does the frictional force do zero work? The answer is because the frictional force doesn't move. The point of contact between the road and the tires moves, but the but it, it's a new point. The force doesn't move. It's not like a rocket pushing the car along. The car is rolling and just rolling in contact. So it doesn't do any work, which would be kind of weird if it did, right? It would say that you would have a frictional force that would make the car increase in energy, but where does that friction get its energy from? I mean, it's not an actual force that does work. So the work is zero. Well, that's fine. So now I can say that's gonna be equal to the change in kinetic energy plus the change in gravitational energy plus the change in uh, internal energy. And that's what we wanna find. So the change in internal energy, uh, the change in gravitational potential energy is zero because it doesn't move up or down. That only depends on the vertical position. And if I know the change in kinetic energy, I can find the change in internal energy. So the change in internal energy is because the work's neg zero, is negative the change in kinetic energy, and that's gonna be negative one half m v two squared minus plus one half m v one squared. So the initial velocity is zero, so, and I know that. And it's negative, 
uh, because the internal energy is going to decrease. Let's go ahead and get a number for that. So I'm going to get negative one half times 2,000 times 30 squared. Uh, I'll put that in my calculator. That's 1,000, one half times 2,000. I'm going to put it on my little calculator platform. See, I need to get a good place for this. See, without the light on. So I'm going to say clear 1,000 times 30 squared. Oh, I got a big number. I knew it was going to be big. That's going to be 9 times 10 to the 2, 4, 5. 5 joules. That's the change in, ener the change in kinetic energy of the car. So that, that's negative. So that's the decrease in internal energy. Okay. Oh, I need a new piece of paper. Okay. So now let's go. We got that one. The frictional force on the car. Now let's go back to the point particle system. And the point particle system, I am going to have work done by the frictional force because it depends on the displacement of the car. And I'm only going to have a change in kinetic energy. So now I can find, uh, I don't know the displacement. I need to know how far it went too. I guess I need to do that next. So the next thing is going to be how far did it go? So let's say this is the x and the y direction. So I want to find delta r center mass. Well, let's just look in the x direction. I'm going to say v average x is going to be delta x over delta t. Right? That's, that's how we define average velocity. But it's also equal to v1 plus v2 over 2. That's also the average velocity. And in this case, I know v1 is 0 and I know v2. And I want to solve for delta x. So delta x is going to be equal to uh, v2 over 2 times delta t. And just check the units. This is meters per second. That has no units, just a number 2. Times seconds, I get meters. So that does give me the distance in meters. And let's just go ahead and get this. 30 times 5 over 2. So it's 15 times 5 is 50. Is that 70? 15 times 5. You do kind of have trouble. Yeah, I thought it was 75. 75 meters. Now I can write delta R as a vector if I want to as 75, 0, 0. And the force of friction, is that what we're finding next? Yeah, the friction force. Um, F friction is going to be FF, some value. It's only in the x direction like that. So now work equals FF dot delta R center mass, and that's going to be equal to FF times 75, and that's going to be the change in kinetic energy. But I already know the change in kinetic energy is 9 times 10 to the fifth, so I can solve for the frictional force FF is going to be equal to 9 times 10 to the fifth divided by 75. I'm not using my holder again. Um, clear 9e5 divided by 75. 12,000 12, newtons. And that's the magnitude. What's the minimum coefficient of friction? Okay, so this is not the maximum coefficient of friction. This is not the maximum friction. This is just the friction it needs. If I use the standard model for the static frictional force, the frictional force is less than or equal to some coefficient of friction times the normal force. And in this case, the normal force, if I just draw this, mg, fn, f friction, the normal force plus gravitational force in the y direction has to be equal to 0. So fn is equal to mg. Now, if I want to find the minimum coefficient, I'm going to get this minimum frictional force. So I get FF, which I'm going to use, is equal to mu S times M S mg. And I want to solve for that. So the coefficient, minimum coefficient of friction is the frictional force, which I just found, divided by mg. So that's going to be 12,000 divided by 2,000 times 9.8. And so 12,000 divided by 2,000 is 6. Right? <laughs> it's 6. 6 over 
Okay, I had to think for a second there. I told you, you've got to think about these things when you're making a video. It, it really, really can throw you off. 0 0.61, no units. And that seems like a reasonable coefficient of friction. And that's that. I think the one key trick that, that people are going to that would get stuck on is this right here. The average, if we know the distance, or we don't know the distance, but we know the time, we use this definition of average velocity. And it's much better to write this as a scalar, a component form of that, because otherwise you get, um, in this case, it would actually work out okay. But if you want to solve for delta t, you're going to end up dividing a vector by a vector, which is just really awkward and uh, embarrassing, so don't do that. So switch to just one one direction. That it works the same for all directions, uh, but that's what you want to do.